In October 2016, King's College London, a prestigious university known for academic excellence and questionable IT decisions, noticed a minor hardware issue in their Strand data center. Named after its location in the basement of the college's Strand building, the Strand data center housed a single HP 3PAR storage system the college used for basically everything – IT systems, staff files, student projects, research data, probably someone's Minecraft server. Anyways, these three PAR systems are very respectable industry-grade beasts. They're robust, performance, and can have petabytes of usable capacity. So naturally, KCL decided to grab one to use for all of their storage needs. Of course, it is therefore common practice to have a second machine for redundancy as well as various other backups. If you look at KCL's IT infrastructure, they seem to have all of these best practices in check. We got redundant systems, backups, what could possibly go wrong? Well, let's do a bit of investigating. Here's what you might have experienced if you joined KCL's IT team back in the day. Day 1, Hour 0. So you're being onboarded as a Legacy Storage Optimization Administrator. Your onboarding mentor introduces you to the Strand 3PAR machine, which has up to 3 million IOPS, consistent sub-millisecond latency, and guaranteed 99.9999% data availability. Then, you may be briefed on how the university is migrating their data to a new 3PAR machine in the Slough building. So how's the migration going, you ask? Uh, don't worry about it, they reply. Then, they give you a rundown on the primary long-term solution to their backup needs, which was Veeam, a multi-platform data backup software that was integrated with some of their systems. You ask why they didn't back up everything to Veeam, but they tell you not to worry about it. Lastly, they take you around back to the shed to show you their tape backups, which is when data is stored on magnetic tapes which have really slow read and write times as opposed to hard drives or SSDs, but are cheaper for long-term storage. You ask what kind of data is backed up to tape, and they tell you most of it is probably on there, but there have been various capacity constraints, so who knows. You then ask if they've ever ran a disaster recovery test to see if these backups even work, but your mentor had already left to use the restroom. You bring up some of these concerns to your supervisor, and he tells you that the 3 par is extremely reliable and there's nothing to worry about. He even shows you their ultimate backup strategy. The 3 par will constantly take volume level snapshots and save them in a different common provisioning group, whatever that is. After processing this with the scrutiny of GPT-2 though, you begin to realize that the backup was still on the same machine, and that this was the IT equivalent of your grandmother securing her files by saving a copy in a different folder somewhere else on her desktop. But he assures you that everything is operating according to university protocols, and that they had many more fallback plans. You continue to seek clarification, however, since you just watched the video the other day about someone accidentally deleting their company's database. What data, applications, and systems are included in the backup strategies? How frequently are backups taken? How often are backups tested for integrity and restorability? Has the IT team conducted a full-scale disaster recovery drill in the last year? Your supervisor has had enough of your sensible inquisitiveness, however, and asks you to please leave. No problem, management probably has better things to worry about than the minuscule chance of there ever being data loss. That kind of thing only happens in folk tales and legends anyways. Before we go back to reality, I have to talk about our sponsor, Hudson River Trading. HRT is a tech-driven trading firm that builds all of its own systems, from their custom networking infrastructure to real-time analysis and research tools. When nothing else meets their performance needs, they simply have to invent it themselves. As a result, HRT has built one of the most robust computing environments in the world, with proprietary low-latency networks and a global fleet of servers that can process a million trades before your IDE finishes indexing. They're hiring sharp engineers around the world experienced in highly efficient languages like C++ and Python. Finance experience? Not needed. A love for research, optimization, and collaboration? That'd be pretty good. So if you want to work somewhere where disaster recovery means fail over to the other high availability cluster and not pray to the forensic data recovery gods, check out HRT. Link in the description below. So back to KCL College London, the IT team detected a fault in the HP 3PAR system in Strand. Since 3PAR machines come with proprietary hardware and software that only the pros at HP know how to fix, they phoned up HP's technicians and asked them to come take a look. 
The Strand machine had four controller nodes, which are separate hardware modules you can think of as the brains of the system that can coordinate and work as one to manage the data. One of these nodes broke, leaving the machine with only three brains. Three PARs designed to tolerate single node failures, so the system was still fully operational at this point. The next day, the friendly HP technicians arrived on site to replace the failed controller node, and in theory, everything should have been fine. But it turns out the technicians weren't so friendly after all, because for some reason, after the faulty node was replaced, the entire machine imploded on itself, leading to a complete loss of data. Upon further investigation, it was determined that an incompatibility between the new firmware on the replacement controller node and the old firmware on the existing hardware caused many storage disks to fail. 3PAR storage architecture breaks physical disks into 1GB chunklets and assembles logical drives by drawing chunklets from as many different disks as possible within a common provisioning group. This wide striping lets large files, which occupy multiple chunks, to be written in parallel across many disks, delivering high throughput. RAID protection is layered on top, so if one or two disks fail, the system can rebuild missing chunklets from the remaining data and parity. What the heck is parity? Well, going back to freshman year of college, you may have been in a class where you learned about Boolean algebra. One of the coolest Boolean functions you can perform is XOR. Unlike OR, which only requires one of the two operands to be true, XOR requires exactly one input to be true. So XOR is both commutative and associative, just like multiplication in real math. But the trick here is the identity property, any value XORed with zero equals itself, and the self-inverse property, any value XORed with itself equals zero. So suppose you have chunks A, B, and C, which are in reality just a bunch of bits that can be XORed together. We can calculate the parity chunk P by XORing all of them together. Now suppose the B chunk blows up and we lose it. Can we reconstruct B using A, C, and the parity chunk? Why yes, of course. Doing some quick maths, we first take advantage of the self-inverse and XOR B onto both sides. B XOR B is zero. Now by the identity property, A XOR zero equals itself. Next, we XOR P onto both sides. Same deal, P XOR P is zero. Since XOR is commutative, we can flip zero and B around and apply the identity property to get just B. And here we have it. Chunk B is equal to the XOR of the other chunks used to calculate the parity and the parity itself. But just like any RAID system, if failures exceed the protection level, for example, if both chunks A and B failed, then we have data loss. In the event that many disks fail, it's possible to have complete data loss, which is exactly what happened to the Strand 3PAR system. HP had issued a firmware update weeks before, which if applied, could have avoided the version incompatibility that caused the incident, but the IT team at KCL had not had the opportunity to apply the update. In the articles and forms I've read, most of them, including the title of this video, make fun of the school for not knowing how backups work. But having software that is a few weeks old isn't a big deal, and having all your data wiped because of this seems like an egregious error from HP. But technically speaking, of course, HP cannot be blamed, as their terms absolve them of liability for most things. Anyways, what's done is done, and the data in the Strand 3PAR system was done. Not only was data from IT systems such as payroll and students' records lost, but also research data and strategic plans written by professors and researchers in the shared drives. Furthermore, many internal systems and university websites went down. IT was now facing what could be the most significant technical outage to ever occur to an educational institute. But it's not time to panic just yet. Take a deep breath and think about this logically. Uh, we could probably piece together these backups and get something done. Let's have some staff get the critical services back online while others verify what data is lost and what could be restored. In the following days, timetabling, payroll, student information, and library systems were restored to working order. In parallel, the team took a look at their many backup options. First and foremost, the broken 3PAR machine had volume snapshots taken regularly, but as we already know, those were only saved on the same machine, so that wasn't going to help. There was another 3PAR system in the Smile building, but only a limited number of applications wrote to that system, and the content in Strand was not replicated there. But what about Veeam? Same deal, only a select few applications were backed up through Veeam. Things were looking grim, and it seemed like most of the Strand data was going to be lost forever, especially all the precious research data in the shared drives. Unless, of course, the tape backups could pull through. 
So the tape backups were the biggest dumpster fire of them all. There were capacity constraints partially caused by terabytes of junk data being backed up daily. There was also little awareness of business risk, so the subset of things being backed up to tape was not necessarily important. Staff also consciously refrained from backing up certain drives to tape because they thought they could rely on the volume snapshots we talked about before, which were only backed up onto the same machine. Furthermore, the tape backup automation failed regularly but reported as completed anyways, leading the staff to believe they were succeeding. As a result, none of this stuff was escalated to higher management, causing the entire tape backup process to be fundamentally broken. By the 26th, about a week after the deletion, the severity of the shared drive data loss was made clear. Faculty at the school had been saving a lot of very important data on the shared drives, which wrote to Strand. For example, the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology, and Neuroscience, or the IOPPN, was hit particularly hard, losing research data accumulated over decades that could only be generated by specialized devices. Well, it's about time now that we assemble the IOPPN hit team because we're either going to get these files back or die trying. What followed was the grueling restoration process which took place over the next month. This would include forensic recovery, reassembling the three-part storage structures manually based on the metadata which remained, as well as digitizing data from the paper copies. By the 4th of November, all services and the J drive were restored. By the 8th, the U drive was restored, and by the 11th, the R drive was restored. At least whatever was possible. There are supposed to be four shared drives on Strand, but nothing on the timeline reveals the fate of the N drive. Perhaps it was part of the irretrievable data loss mentioned in an email sent to university staff. After the restoration process, the shared drives were now available on new infrastructure with new backup technologies. However, some staff had lost faith in the drives and began saving work on personal devices, much to the school's chagrin. Now who was the mastermind behind the disastrous backups? Well, as the story goes, the problems began at the top. The technology roadmap had an overwhelming number of initiatives, overloading the IT team, tripling the headcount in two years, no one really knew what was going on, senior level IT only met once a quarter, maybe someone found out the tape backups were broken but knew that fixing it would mess up the KPIs so they ignored it. The IT team was also never able to convince the university staff to perform a full-scale disaster recovery test since they only had a single production stack, meaning such a test would cause downtime. Despite improving the resilience of their backup system though, as of the external report's time of writing, they still hadn't actually executed a full recovery test. But it's been over 8 years since then. Surely they've done a test or two by now.